Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Page Fight. So sorry about the technical difficulties. Um, it, sometimes it's just live technology. That's how it goes. This is the show where we take your landing pages and have them torn to bits by heavyweight champions and conversion rate optimization. I'm so happy you're on the show today. In case you were not watching on the pagefights.com URL, go over here to pagefights.com forward slash with hyphen Joanna, and you can get access to all sorts of bonus content, um, including discounts that are exclusive only to Page Fights members. So the name of the game here is we take your landing pages and then put them in front of uh, Holly Gardner, Pat Laya, and a guest judge. And this time is Joanna with Coffee Hackers, and I'm super excited to have all of you guys on the show here today. Um, we had about 400 submissions to this competition this time around. We've narrowed that down to the top 20, and the winner of Page Fights this time around will receive a one-on-one -on -one consultation with Joanna Lee, a one-on-one -on -one consultation with myself um, for a website review, and six months free of Unbounce Pro 99. So let's just get right into the judges and, and get right into the landing page because you've been waiting long enough. Let's, here we go. First up, we have Ollie Gardner of Unbounce. He is the co-founder of Unbounce and has seen more landing pages than marketers have made bad decisions at conferences. Ollie, what's happening? Welcome to the broadcast, man. Hey, hey, I have my fighting gloves on and I'm ready to kick some ass. Fantastic. Next up, we have Pep Laya. He is my boss and one of the harshest critics of landing pages out there. Um, he has been called the Simon Cowell of conversion rate optimization and for very, very good reason. What's happening? Welcome to the broadcast, man. Looking forward to kicking some ass. Excellent. And last but certainly not least, we have Joanna Weave of Copy Hackers. She is the original conversion rate copywriter, or conversion copywriter. Whatever. And uh, don't let her nice face fool you. She is a mm -hmm. viper when it comes to critiques. Um, Joanna, welcome to the broadcast. You ready to get your fight on? Oh, yeah. I'm going to kick some ass. It's going to be awesome. All right. Fantastic. Now, Here's the way the format's going to go. We're going to go through about 20 landing pages or so. Uh, we are running a little bit late, so I'll try not to keep you for too long here today. Um, we're going to run through. We're going to critique. We're going to get to the top five, and then you are going to vote on the top five at the very end of the show. Whoever wins is, again, going to get a six months free of Unbounce Pro 99, a one-on-one -on -one consultation with myself, and a one-on-one -on -one consultation with Joanna. We also have an exclusive discount for you. Ollie is, seems to be missing from the broadcast. He's just vanished. He's gone. Just totally done. Um, he's, he, we're, we're, we're going to get, you're going to win some cool stuff if you win. So here we go. We're going to jump right into the pages here. First up, we have company over the road positions. If you want to switch over to my screen here, Tia, we will show everybody what's going on with this CR England page. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to jump in, uh, if that's cool. Uh, Company Over the Road, I didn't even get that that was like the brand name, so that's kind of the first problem for me on this page. Um, when we get into it, though, when you actually start reading it, the copy, you know, the layout, I'm not going to talk too much about the design, Pep and Ollie can talk more about that, certainly, but the copy is like basically trying to attract people who have really, really low expectations. So I think like, okay, well if that's your thing, then at least be open about it. You have this line here that says in as little as 30 minutes you could be on your way to a new career with a company that has never laid off a driver, which is like, what? <laughs> Who would want that kind of company to work for? But whatever, if that's what you are, like own it, like make that your headline. That's something that I would do on this page. That's my thought. And it's funny how the job description is not a job description at all. What, what the hell is that? It's true. It's true. The first line and of the job description is the name Company Over the Road, yeah. And the testimonials is like fake pictures, you know, protecting privacy. Well, if people are proud to work for this company, they wouldn't want to hide their faces. So it looks very shady to me. Plus, I mean, the, the, the general website looks like puke. <laughs> I, I actually think the testimonials are believable here, and I don't really believe any social proof huh. that. I think these are okay. They, it's not stock photography. It looks kind of shitty, so I, I, I kind of believe them. This woman right here really seems to be uh, happy to be giving her testimonial about the page. So no, I want to uh, there that these are fake pictures. Testimonials are not are real. The, but the pictures have been changed. Blah blah blah. It says that in the mice type. It says it's that. 
Yeah. Stop on the right corner above the oh, last. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, you know, at least they're honest about it, right? At least they're, like, declaring that it's, like, a lie. Which is weird because that first testimonial is about the girl saying, oh, well, at least they're honest. They never lied to me. Like, that's the best she can say about this company. So, anyway, a little weird. Uh, one, on. thing I, one thing I want to point out about this page, too, is that uh, it also looks very much like uh, the university pages that we've seen before in the past. That was my first impression, and then it took me a second to register that it was even a truck driving page. So, mm -hmm. interesting. Part of the logo. The logo looks like uh, some kind of school insignia. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, we're going to move on. Here we go. Now we have uh, the eastbound host. These guys are actually filling in the spot for Magento Go. Uh, Joanna, this was actually one of the ones that you wanted to see, so why don't you jump in on that one? Yeah, I mean, I can only imagine that this is a landing page for, like, an email or, like, an ad about Magento Go closing down. And in that case, like, I think it's probably pretty interesting. And they should go really, like, a bit harder, I think, with talking about Magento Go and how much better they're going to be than Magento Go is. I think the price has come a little early, and, of course, July, it's now out of date. should be August, obviously. Um, but one of the things that I would worry about if... If Magento Go is closing down and I'm going to switch to somebody else, I'd probably want to make sure they're not going to close down too. So I think that's like a big, you know, miss or opportunity on this page. And that's like my initial thought on it. Also, the way that the logo overlaps with the blue and the gray bar, it looks like the page is broken. So it kind of takes away from the credibility and like me wanting to trust this page. That's what I feel about it. Right on. Yeah, also, okay. or go ahead. Oh, they're not mentioning what are you switching to? Like, which platform? And yeah, it's implied, right? Yeah. Found host, and why should you use this host over 7 million other options? So, I mean, it's total two huge misses here. How many headlines do you need? <laughs> <laughs> one here, one there, one there, one there, and then the text just goes tiny. It's like, oh, what? Oh. I don't know. It's, and it's just take that foot around. It's, is it safe to say this, these guys aren't making it into the, the finals? Not so much. All right. Let's move on. All right. So here we got Snap Agency. These guys have actually been interacting with us quite a bit. Um, I, I, I just want to throw in here. I'm going to start this off, actually. I think that somebody heard at some point that if you use uh, someone's eye gaze, they're going to convert more. And that's the first impression I got from this page. Um, so, Pep, what do you think here? I mean, I read the copy, and it's not written for humans. It's keyword stuffing. Mm, mm -hmm, uh -huh. mm -hmm. so, I mean, and it's, it's so funny how I mean the copy, all, everything about it sucks. I mean the content, the whatever. I mean, yeah, who is this dude? And the headline says, "Get traffic, get revenue." And the call to action on the forum is, "Get optimized. Yeah. Make up your mind." <laughs> yeah. So, and you you need to introduce your form. What's the form for? Yeah. Okay. No context. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, we're an SEO company. Yeah, I'm going to get optimized. Like, introduce the purpose of the page in the form area. The form should be able to stand alone. It's mm -hmm. a on the page and still communicate why you want to fill it in. And see this Google Analytics thing there? Yeah, right down here. It's got, a, it's got a badge on there. They're certified for something, but you can't read it. So, oh, yeah, that's what that is. All you're saying there is, Google Analytics. <laughs> <laughs> Just randomly screen this stuff out. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I mean, it's one thing to, like, have your headline be, like, really reflective of what people want. And, of course, it's also probably good for SEO to say Minneapolis SEO services. Great, I'm in Minneapolis, and I want that thing. But then, essentially, you could really cut the rest of the copy on the page because it's not doing anything more and kind of repeating that, and it's not making you stand out as like the best solution in Minneapolis for SEO services and why I should choose you. Plus, I know that like having multiple fields in a form can be good for like really qualifying your lead, but if two of the three fields are optional, really think hard about whether you need all three of those on the page. That's what I would say. Right yeah, on. You need to say required and an asterisk. People know what the asterisk means, Jim. Yeah. But just you can highlight the optional ones, but don't say optional required, optional required. It's too much work to figure out what I need what? to do. Yeah. And it's a website. The argument oh. for why to choose this company is so weak. I mean, come on. <laughs> because we rank high, we know how to do it for you. I mean, that's what every SEO company has been saying since totally. 2001. I mean, 
whatever. Right. Oh, but you can rank first. You, you can rank first. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on. Actually, this one is a finalist, Best Global Movers here. Um, I believe, uh, Pep, this was one of your, your picks, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like how focused it is, um, mm -hmm. how clear it is. The layout is nice. I mean, it's very, very smooth. Um, so, yeah, cool. thumbs up. We're going to actually go move forward because we're going to get into deeper critiques of this a little bit later on. Um, but I'm glad that this was made the finals. Congratulations, guys. Here we have Styler.com. Uh, you can get stylish with our award-winning custom tailor service. Let's see. Ollie, kick us off here. Okay, so look down below the dude. There are three steps here. I kind of like when people do that, but the first one says, fill in the form in 30 seconds. There's no form. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I know yeah. where it comes. Like you have to self-segment here. You have to click male or female, and then a form appears. Don't make me segment here. Segment in your ads. Don't. Mm -hmm. If I'm a if I'm a woman and I come here, I'm immediately seeing a guy in a suit. I'm like, this isn't for me. Totally. So I, I'm gonna leave. Yeah. Um, nice photography. I like that. If I was a guy coming here, it, it's good. But just take the segmentation away. Do that somewhere else. Put your form in there so I know what to do. Yeah. Isn't it strange that it says it's a tailor service, but the button is find the tailor? I thought you yeah. were the tailor. I know, right? It's super confusing. And then when you click the button to find the tailor, you fill in the form, and the button there is also find a tailor. Like, at what point do you find <laughs> this tailor? And I'm, I'm just trying to get one. my suits tailored. Ah! <laughs> Uh, one thing I do like, in the in the footer, people usually have a copyright date, actually, it's 2014 now, guys, but they have a range, 2007, 2013, I like that, it establishes a bit of credibility, you guys have been around for a while, it's just a tiny thing, I kind of like that. Yeah. Well, I think that they're not doing enough to really communicate the value of their service, it's mostly, this is what we do, okay, I'll find the tailor, I mean, why And I don't you... even know that that's what they do. Is that what they do? Do they connect you with actually, the Actually, yeah, not clear. Uh, I know. So, it's like it says it's an award-winning custom tailor service. Which if you think, okay, you'll tailor my stuff for me, but now you're just connecting me with a tailor. It's just. Um, what's the award? Who, who gave you this award? You can't just say award. Their mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is this one making it to the finals, guys? Nope. No. All right. Moving on. Up. Go. Hey. <laughs> you know, I made my very first website in 1994. It looked like this. I mean, if you sell web design, I mean, you should your your design should be good. Any thirty dollar theme in Theme Forest looks better than this crap for fifteen hundred. Mm -hmm. And also, mm -hmm. so, what are you selling? Get a new website design. So, is it a PSD file? HTML, CSS, a whole working website is not clear at all. Yeah, and there's no portfolio on here. Like, uh, that's the big miss, right? Where's your portfolio? Yeah. Something I want to point out, too, uh, this is not a super responsive site, um, and oh. we're selling responsive. I, it, it broke a few Somebody times. Like, <laughs> I was trying to resize it. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. It's nice. Especially if you use language like impress customers with a stunning site and you look like, you know, vomit. The next email. Yeah, I mean, the people... So that is that. Inspiring. Oh, come on. I know. I mean, from the bottom, like, the bottom part of it isn't as awful. Yeah. But, like, the top is where you're going to lose people. And I don't know what this business journal thing is doing at the bottom. It's like, it says they, like, advertise in it. <laughs> so what? That's not like going to build your credibility. You paid to be in there twice a week or twice a month, whatever. Yeah. But the page is really lacking. Go to this website twice a month. I'm not going to tell you when. And we'll be there. Totally, right? What? Who gives a shit? I know. <laughs> Moving on. Gig Salad. Actually, this was one of your picks, Joanna. This yeah. is a finalist, so I want to hear your top three pieces of feedback, and then we'll move on to the, to the next step. Yeah, I mean, I really dig it. I think that, you know, the video thing isn't too big and distracting up at the top. The headline is really straightforward. It's a little clearer and more succinct than maybe something that I would initially go with, and it'd be maybe worth testing something bigger. But I think the value prop is there. You can sign up for free and get more gigs, and then 
you know, they can support that down the page with how many people are using it and how many leads they're getting. And it's, the numbers are not insignificant. So um, I think that that's like, it's really, it's proving what it's saying a lot on the page and it makes me willing to click the get started button if I'm looking to get more gigs. All right, fantastic. We're going to move on to the next one and we'll get more into this one a little bit later. Thanks, guys. QC Makeup Academy. What do you guys think of this one? Uh, oh, they haven't heard from you starting a while. All right. I, it's a great headline. I think it's the best so far by a long shot. Learn to become a makeup artist online. I know exactly what's going on here. It's great. But the attention ratio, the ratio of things you can do to what you should be doing is 16 to 1. If you took away the nav at the top and the footer, it would be so focused. It would be great. Uh, but I would test, let me run a test. Test putting the form on the right-hand side. Right on, on the right-hand mm -hmm. side? Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna jump in. I'm not a big fan of this page. Um, I get, I like that it's clean and it's not trying to do too much, but uh, I don't know that it's like I get like the goal right is to get me to want to get that brochure. But is there enough here to make me want to get that brochure? Like the image is nice, but if I want to learn to become a makeup artist online, like that's so emotional, and you're dealing with a bunch of people. Like, talk to me more, a little bit more about that, and make me believe that without saying too much. I'm not saying make this long form at all, but add a bit more to make me understand um, that I'm going to become like an actual, like credible makeup artist, and not just going to be like some girl who can now like whip around, you know, eyeshadow or something. Like, who else has used this and done really well with it? And can I believe? that all I have to do is get this brochure and actually become a makeup artist that people would trust and pay money to online. I don't believe it yet with this page. It's not enough there for me to want to fill out that form. Joe, do you think that this would benefit from an explainer video? Potentially. If it had like before and after people in there, like, people, like actual students who went through it, I think that would be especially valuable. Um, if you've had students go through, just get them to give you a video testimonial, right? It really, honestly, usually just takes asking. Um, I don't know about, like, what do you mean by, like, the explainer part of it? Like, what you're going to do online? Yeah, like, show me show me a little bit about the actual makeup techniques. So or maybe you should have an explainer video to how to read a brochure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what does that even mean? This one did not make it so we're going to keep going. Uh, unfortunately, QC Makeup Academy... Do a good job, but maybe next time. What about optionsanimal.com? Here's the one I think. I, I, I picked this one. I don't like this one because uh, I am new to options. Shows the woman on the left-hand side, and I have options experience. This really slick-looking dude on the right. Um, yep, you nailed it. That's yeah. what I, my problem with it completely. I'm, like, offended by this page. <laughs> <laughs> the segmentation sucks. Yeah. All right. I mean, and all these ice stuck photos, I mean, then... Very about clarity and all that stuff. What is Miyagi Pep all he's doing? He's Miyagi. <laughs> <laughs> Pep, I believe Miyagi was one of your. Uh, you wanted to see these guys in here, right? Was that was that you, Pep? Yeah, Miyagi. I mean, I, I like how um, how, uh, how I like the headline. I think it packs a lot of punch, and uh, I like anything all everything that comes before the video. I dislike the call to action because now it's about training my staff whereas it was about increasing sales with knowledgeable staff and the only thing you have is a video and anybody who's had a landing page with video only and has been measuring that knows that only a small fraction of your visitors watch the video. I mean mm -hmm. if you're doing over 10 percent you're doing great. 20 percent is phenomenal. This did so, not make your final picks here Pat. Can you tell me why real quick? Yeah, because it has no copy. I'm not going to watch the damn video. Okay. Everything else is great, and call to action sucks, too. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, financial advisor. This was actually the inheritance tax page. Both Pep and Joanna picked this, so let's go real quick. This is a finalist. Uh, so tell me what you liked about this page, just real it's quick. It's changed. It's changed? Yeah, this is completely different. No, there were two by this group. I yeah, think there were two. The last one was financial services. So uh, I, I like the, the fact that it's, it was very specific, and if you there's a lot more lot more content here, and it's all very specific to a specific problem. The content and it was very focused. Uh, of course, many things could be improved, but I like mm -hmm. the specificity. Fantastic. Yeah. Let's get into that a little bit more later on. Open topic: What is content marketing? 
This one was really rough for me. I just have to jump in. Yeah, um, I don't know. I was maybe just like, I don't know. I don't know. But I think anybody who would ask what is content marketing wouldn't then, right, what's this for the efficient content marketer? Like, if you're an efficient content marketer, what? Then you don't ask the question what is content marketing because you know what content marketing is. So is the white paper called what is content marketing? And then they go into this like, as like this long thing, this you know wall of text about what content marketing has become the preferred strategy to attract consumers and like all this bullshit, right? No offense, but it's like serious. Like it's selling content marketing without even doing a good job of selling it. And I'm not sure at the end of it what I'm supposed to care about and want to do and why I would choose to get this white paper when there are about a million blog posts on content marketing. I don't know why. What's yeah. the, why should I do this? Call on you, why, <laughs> why are you talking about your clients? You're supposed to be selling a book. Save that for afterwards. When you start doing your email campaigns, you can talk about yourself. This is just about your... Your white paper, it just sounds clinical, it's an ebook. Yeah, and, and what is the value proposition? Is the offer that I will understand what content marketing is? Is that it? I mean, it's lame. Uh, All right, guys, we're going to move on. Go, Paisa. Go ahead, Ollie. You can get 7.5% off this little man child. <laughs> what the fuck is this page about? This is true. Uh, 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 Just yesterday, I was walking around and uh, thinking, man, if I could only earn 7.5% rewards. <laughs> up to 70% off coupon. Safe oh, to say that we have, okay. there's no clarity on this page, right? No. The best clarity is in what those two testimonial people are saying, right? The two people who gave their testimonial. That's really the only place where I start to get a little bit of meat about it. A little, not even much, but enough and to like. I understand that it's maybe India specific because if they're talking about rupees. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of a cashback well, thing. But yeah, I mean, yeah, terrible clarity. It makes any sense. The, the step and stuff. But the yeah. last field in the form, this 0 0.9. I mean, dude, <laughs> solve your spam problem some in yeah. some other way. Yeah. Don't pass it on to us. Yeah. Right. Yourself. All right, we're going to move on. This is actually a finalist. This is what a, uh, a, a truck driving page should look like. Um, at least it looks like a truck driving page. Um, what do you, Pat, this was one of your finalists, right? Uh, I don't think so. It's no, one of mine. No, it's one of mine. Joe, go ahead. What do you like about this page, Joanna? Yeah, OK, so admittedly, the copy could be improved. It seems like placeholder copy. It's really straightforward and not like, trying to help people understand exactly, you know, it's not benefits focused and things like that. It leads with the word we and we're going somewhere. That's a bad thing. But when right. you can get past those things, it's a credible looking page. Talk to a recruiter now at the top has a phone number. I can see that the regional flatbed driving jobs. Okay, is that right for me? They're in these states. Okay, do I want to drive there? And then the tabs, pay and benefits and hiring areas, I think are probably exactly what your prospect wants to see anyway. You could, they'd probably be like clicking like crazy people on the pay and benefits and then on hiring areas. And when you get within those tabs, you get some really great, rich content that's not trying too hard. It's just giving you what you need to know to fill in that form. All right, cool. We're going to move on to the next one, and then we're going to get into the deeper critiques of the top five. Uh, this is actually another top five page, and uh, this is what a university page, I think, should look like. Again, back to the first uh, their page that we looked at today. Yeah, we're actually um, some real page fights here. The same, the same stuff going against each other. It's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Ollie, this was one of your picks, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I, Tell I, me I, real quick what you I, like about it. I've a lot of higher ed uh, pages lately, and uh, this one does a good job. But don't have a breadcrumb at the top. That's mm. just inviting someone to leave and go somewhere else. Mm. The first thing there, get rid of that. From the video, fill out the form below. <clears throat> How about watch the video? <laughs> That should come at the end of the video. Now you're done. Now you go and do this. But I want a reason to watch the video. So that's mm -hmm. kind of said. You don't get many people watching your videos. Right on. But I do like it. In, in the interest of time, I am actually going to skip past the last five because we, we have the top five. So let's get into the, the, the top five and go into deeper con uh, critiques here. Let's, uh, oh, nope, that one's not a top five. Um, Poor guys. <laughs> sorry, guys. So let's go back to bestglobalmovers.com. This was the first finalist pick that we had here. Um, and 
who, who picked this and, and tell me why you picked it, and then let's keep going forward with uh, the critiques and go a little bit deeper with it. You all pick? I, I well, love one. One thing I would say, uh, make your, your CTA, have that be the only thing on the page with that color, because I'm kind of jumping all the things that are, that are red, or whatever color that is, that salmon color. Just make that the only thing that looks like that. Um, I take that stuff at the top away. It's what stuff? The call us and then become a partner. Let's let's focus on this, not something oh. else. Um, but I mean, call us might be good because uh, yeah. phone leads tend to be way more valuable than any form fills. Well, if that's the case, focus more on that as your primary, you know, yeah. goal. In my experience, uh, having a phone number does not dis make you make people fill out forms less. Um, right. But take by that enhance credibility. It's not an issue, I think. Hmm. Um, what is an issue for me here is that you know I get six quotes. I get it. So who are your mm -hmm. uh, who are these six? Are they your best buddies? How how are those picked? <laughs> um, like, do you know what's best for me? Maybe I care about price, or maybe I care about the best. Like. Maybe there could be an option where I specify, uh, you know, what what's most important criteria for me about mm -hmm. moving companies. Mm -hmm. And I know, like English is not my first language, so I was puzzled about removal companies. I was yeah. expecting moving, but it might be a I don't know. Oh yeah. Yeah, removal sounds like trash removal or something rather than moving companies. Um, so yeah, I agree there. Um, it's really focusing everything on price. Which you know can be good if that's like what you're doing, but what's the next question people have really after they um, worry about price is like, are you gonna move my shit? Are you gonna steal it? Are you going to drop it all and break it? Like, um, so I think that price might not be the only thing to worry about, but I'm glad that they lead with it. I wonder though about the from up to six removal companies. So really, you're saying it's probably gonna be like one removal company, yeah. right? Like, who am I getting quotes? From why? Why would you stop at six? Why not a limitless amount of removal companies or moving companies? So it's confusing to me. I like the trust area. It, it's mm -hmm. it attacks three different kind of aspects of it. You have testimonials on demand if you want to scroll through instead of flooding the page with them, uh, and it's pretty believable. I like this testimonial. The thing the in the middle could be taken off because it's kind of kind of irrelevant. Um, leads on a different path. Which and part? They you. Okay. Tips to help you move. I mean, uh, yeah, it's traction. And the FAQ. I mean, I like the FAQs. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they expand. They don't take. Yeah, you they're hidden. I don't have to look at them. I do think that the Something Trust up. Pilot score is a little low to show here, and it might help to compare it to what other moving companies have. Like, is 8.2 good? Because I'd like to go with someone who's got like a nine or a ten in there. Um, so it'd be good to like frame that, like, are most moving companies at, like, a six? Like, compare it for me so I don't have to worry about that. All right, fantastic work. We're going to actually move on to the next one. So congratulations, uh, Best Global Movers. You will be in the top, you are in the top five. If you want to vote for global, uh, Best Global Movers, go ahead and click the Cast My Vote button below after we're done with all the critiques here. These guys are number one. And uh, moving on to finalist number two, we have got... Gig Salad. Joanna, you picked this one out. Um, I'm a big fan of this page, too. I, uh, this is actually just a screenshot, so you can't see the video. Um, go a little bit deeper into what you liked about this page, and then we'll go down the road here. Yeah, sorry. I feel like I talked long about it last time. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, it's it's just a, I think it comes down to having a really clear value prop for a landing page. Like, when we're talking about landing pages, we're usually talking about having, at minimum, right, starting at having one goal for the page. And I think that everything that's on here really leads people to that goal of getting started. Like, it gives enough without, like, getting into tangents, which we often see on landing pages where you're, like, trying to fill in space or something with more about you. But they're really focused on what you're going to get and how easy it's going to be. And they prove that. Instead of just saying it, they prove it with all of this great data. And then people who are giving testimonials that have these really nice summary headers above them. So I don't have to read the whole testimonial to get it. Double and triple booked weekends. OK? <laughs> like, why wouldn't I sign up for this, right? Why wouldn't I? What could hold me back from that? So I think it's really surprising. However. However. Oh, really? If Hold on. Scroll, scroll back up. And if you just look at the above the fold area, and for most people, this we get is not visible. 
Unless you have a really huge... No, the, the blue... Yeah, yeah. no, agree. And yeah, then, then the value proposition is missing. You have to figure out what is this about. I like the video no, loop. the value proposition background. is missing. It's sign up free and get more gigs. Sign up free and get more gigs. Moving gigs, uh, help... Uh, Look at the guy moving. behind him. It's the guitar key. behind him. Look at Craigslist gig section. Music is like 1% in there. But we get performance, band, speakers, event service booked. Now, that's a value proposition. That should be way before sign up, free, get more gigs thing. No, it, that is it leads with we, for one, and your headline should not lead with we. It should lead with them, right? So we wouldn't say we well, get whatever. more whatever. We get your thing booked, but I'm saying no, you leave, I would... sign up. I mean, <laughs> buy my ding, shit. Ding, ding. Yes. Uh, I would say in the headline, though, make it about the music, man. Sign up free is a little aggressive for me. I, I want to know a bit more, like, perhaps in gigs. Am I going to gigs or are you getting gigs for me? It's a little vague. Um, what I would do, you go right down at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, look at this last testimonial. It's from, of the three, it's from someone from America's Got Talent. That's huge. Oh, oh shit. Put that at the top. That's massive credibility. Wow. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, awesome. move that up. Great point. All right, congratulations. If you want to vote for Gig Salad, they are number two finalists on the Cast My Vote button. Uh, congratulations, guys, for making it this far. Moving on. Financialadvisor.co.uk. Who wants to kick this one off with your review? No one's well, jumping. It's different than what I saw. A couple, I already mentioned that I liked how specific it is. However, the, the how the content is presented, it's a wall of text, the readability is crap. Uh, the form is like overloaded. It's, you don't need this big of a form right away unless low quality leads are an issue. And of course, what? if I want, if you want me to trust this page, you need to look more, you know, credible because this is quite amateurish. Yeah. Well, what's a dress finder? What, what kind oh, of skill is yeah. that? This happens a couple times. We saw this on another page. I don't think we looked at it. It sounds like it's going to find your address for you, but it's really just you type in address and it auto fails, right? It like figures it out. But I was confused on a different page that did the exact same thing. I used it like it was a drop down almost and it showed like UK or something on it and I kept waiting for something to happen. And I didn't know until somebody else told me what to do there. I would have completely abandoned the page because it's too frustrating. So anyway, I agree with you on the address finder totally. What's with the opening hours? Uh, what is that? Oh. Right the top, it's the opening hours, like 9 to 5, 9 to 4. It's, uh, yeah. uh, no, I, I think that's good. It sets you an expectation. So if you call on a different hour when people are not at work, mm. if it's not a 24-hour company, I mean, it's great, I think. Yeah, I think that maybe I agree because opening hours. I agree. I read it like, um, like that's when I can pop in if I want to or something, like yeah, to their the office. Place. But it's really about calling them. So maybe switch it from opening hours to call us anytime during the right. Like make sure it's right. clear that you can call during these hours. And the headline is like, do I need advice? I don't know. You tell me, man. <laughs> like, I know, right? I agree. We tend to default to like questions as headlines when we're not really sure what to say. So that's like a good place to start. <laughs> now optimize it. And does it need to be independent, or do do I mean do I really want an independent financial advice? Or that's their whole value prop, though. Like if you go yeah. down, it's all it's not from them. Yeah. They're really uh, they're well, they're finding people agent. who are oh, independent okay. advisors rather than people who are. Uh, there's, a different there's a different whatever, yeah. It's actually a good benefit of this. Well, right on. All right. I would like to see, um, you know, the I would like to speak to an advisor for free kind of closer to the top here too, or at least test that out in another landing page um, because that, that phone call, that financial advice itself is kind of a personal thing, and uh, I think doing that over email is, you know, eh. All right. Yeah. So can I just say I love those bullets at the bottom? They totally make me want to call in and find out what you're talking about. Like with the specifics of the bullets at the very bottom, they're awesome. Oh, I thought that was sarcasm for a minute. <laughs> no, for real. Yeah, right. Like, oh no, what if I'm making these mistakes? Right, that kind of thing. I like it. Right on. Well, congratulations, financialadvisor.co.uk finalist number three. If you want to vote for them, moving on. If I could get my uh, screen to work here. There we go. Finalist number four, Everett. Go ahead, Ollie. I did not vote for this page. <laughs> okay. Tell me why you didn't vote for this finalist. The worst headline of the day. 
Ah! Driving for average. What was this? Just, it's just three words. It doesn't... Driving for... Uh, and then, we're going somewhere. Yeah, right to the back button. I want to talk. Uh, I don't know. Fly now. It's, it's just... uh, the part that I liked about it was uh, the uniform and the value thing. Like, we're all the same theme. We're proud. But, like, hey, that's kind of different from all the other trucking companies. They're just guys with beer bellies. I mean... I like that, but <laughs> yeah. the form is so super scary. Um, and having done optimization work for truck driving companies, I know how hungry they are for leads. It's mm. a huge mess. The the turnover rate is hundred percent in this industry, mm -hmm. uh, or close to it. So yeah. make it a little bit easier. I would break this form into two, three steps. Get the contact info first, so I have automated follow-ups, whatever going. And you know, want to talk and contact me, oh, that's crappy. Yeah, yeah, so I agree that the copy is not where it should be and the form is quite long, like unnecessarily long. But I still stand behind it being it having the right content on the page in the tabs organized in a nice way. Now they just have to take it, take that great what and do a better how with it, like really figure out how to message it so it's more attractive to their prospects. Yeah, the, the one to talk, I want to get back to that. It, is this a helpline? It's, it's <laughs> like, you know, yeah. I'm sad about don't trust. kill yourself. Work for us. Right, well, yeah, exactly. But it's another one of those questions, right? When you don't know what to say, you do a question headline every time. Now, I, I, I also want to ask here, too, like, would this be an instance where maybe changing your button color could help with conversions? Because all of the uh, red button, or all the red here is really overpowering to me. Um, that was the first thing that stood out to me. What do you guys think? The apply yeah. now looks exactly the same as the button. I mean, it's like you got a button at each end of the form. I mean, I don't know if it's going to be a big deal, but it is, yeah. uh, no, it doesn't look like a button. It's just like a flat box. Ah, I don't really care about that. Hmm. I, I do like the, you know, the little microsite aspect. I, I kind of like that, you know, as Joanna's pointing out. Um, putting, you know, the pain benefits right there is good. Hiring areas. It's a little strange wording. <laughs> are, we, are we hiring an area? Are you an area? Do you want to <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> All right. Well, Everett is a finalist number four. If you want to vote for them, go ahead and do so in the vote button uh, below. Moving on. Finalist number five, Brighton College. Ollie, this was your pick here. You said a lot to say. You had a lot to say about it. Uh, I defend did, uh, your choice, please. It's really. Uh, I like the thing about the wages as well. That's nice. It kind of. Um, and I love the form area. It's you could probably just look at that in isolation, and it would make sense. But I don't think you need the first button there. It's kind of like uh, mm -hmm. above the fold here. You know, you don't need it there because the form is right there. Mm -hmm. So I'll just focus on the information there, and we let the form do its job right below. However, what is missing here is why Brighton College? They're selling. Hey, start a career in AutoCAD. You know, basically, they're selling an idea. They're selling also their competition. They're not totally. arguing arguments for why why them. The yeah. form that you like, you know, three column form. You know, typically when I test multi column forms, they tend to lose against single columns. So I would definitely mm -hmm. test a, a, a single column a form. The drop down there, of course, first choice is already selected. But if you're selling me a specific program. Why have me select a program? So it seems kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. You, you can unsubscribe at any time. You, you just made me think that you're going to start spamming me with email. Yeah. Put that yeah. 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 The good price click of a program should be available right away. I think it's kind of scammy, you um. know, to uh, subscribe to know how much it costs. I mean, come mm -hmm. on. But can you scroll down, Tommy? Sure. I thought there was more down there that was better for. Yeah, like when we get in here, now we're starting to learn more about Brighton and why it's great. This, mm -hmm. But it's like this wall of text, which is like impossible to get through. Like three campus locations, that whole thing could be replaced by a map that has yep. the three locations on it. The 100% practicum placement sounds to me like the reason to choose Brighton College. If I'm going to go there, or Brighton, I'm sorry, is it college? If I'm going to go there, I can get a hundred, I'm pretty much guaranteed I'm going to get in a practicum. That's pretty awesome I think so elevate that make that consider that as your value prop potentially or at least test it and what's what's next fill out the form no I've just done that it's above there that's mm -hmm. not it's a little bit wasted put some more some more interesting in there 
All right. Well, fantastic. This is final number five. If you want to vote, we're actually going to open it up to voting. And while you guys are voting, we're going to do Q&A for everybody. Um, just to recap real quick, who our... Nope, see, you did not make it to the finals. I'm sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> it really wants in. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. This is just not how it's going to work. Uh, we are going to recap the top five finalists. Again, we've got Best Global Movers at finalist number one. Finalist number two is gigsalad.com. Finalist number three is financialadvisor.co.uk. Averitz, the trucking company, at number four. And finalist number five. We're going to go ahead and open the polls now. So please feel free to cast your votes. I'm going to switch over to my screen here so you can see my lovely face. There we go. And we're going to get into some audience questions here, guys. So the first question that we have is from Avia. I think I'm saying that right. Do you think question headlines are always a mistake, Joanna? Shit. I shouldn't have said it. When you say, like, a sweeping thing like that, like, yeah, people think, like, oh, that's always the case. And I shouldn't have said that. But it's uh, generally where people, like, start, right? And it's like, okay, start okay, there. Start like, there. like, why should I choose, right? Like, why should I trust blank company? You see that a lot, and then you see the trust stuff underneath it. That's great for a place header when you're wireframing, but now go back and fill that in or test filling that he that subhead in instead with a real reason to trust. So answer the question instead of just asking it. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I, from the copywriting standpoint, it is always like this really good default to like jump back to. But push yourself a little bit further, mm -hmm. right? Answer your question. Find out because when you start answering that question a little bit deeper, that's when you get into the real benefits and the meat totally. of what the page is all about. And if you can't answer the question, don't ask it because your audience shouldn't be the one. So the person looking at the page yeah, other kids, shouldn't so. be the one mm -hmm. to answer that for you. Wow. Yep. Um, let's see. So Amanda asks, should footers really be avoided on a landing page at all costs? Are there benefits to including terms and service and copyright details? Yes, you need to put you can put those in there. I mean, and sometimes Google, if you're doing AdWords, it actually wants a direct connection to your website for a little bit of trust. But you know, people don't generally click on that stuff. Um, but having a footer with like your you know a little mini site map and all that kind of stuff, that's a really bad idea. Mm. Yeah, you know, having a privacy policy and that kind of stuff, absolutely. Um, Christopher has a question. Here's a question. Video backgrounds, go or no go? What's the fine line between eye-catching and distracting? I'm going to throw that one to you because uh, I know you kind of hate video backgrounds. It's a dangerous, dangerous territory. I mean, it can work beautifully, and I have seen, seen it work beautifully. I think it worked for Geek Salad. I noticed myself um, being impressed by it. Like, it was a good video. Uh, however, oftentimes it works as a distraction and takes away attention from the stuff that actually matters, like form, copy, call to action, blah, blah, blah. So I would never just implement it. Always test it. All right, excellent. Now I just want to let you guys know that we are closing the voting now. Uh, Corey is going to be gathering the results, so we're going to tally those up. We're going to keep answering a few questions here while we're going on. Um, let's see, so Dan asks, can you properly critique a landing page if you haven't seen the ad or campaign that sent you there? That's a very good question, guys. We cannot. We're just bullshitting here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the question, though, right? I agree. I think everybody is thinking that. Like, in the absence, though, of knowing where it's coming from, can we say things about it, right? We don't know what's driving to it. We're not necessarily the audience for it. But can you apply better practices to it still? Yeah, I think yes. Yeah, I think context, it's everything in conversion. Like clarity and context are probably the two biggest factors in conversion. And so we don't have that context, but like John is saying, yeah, we can still make your page better in other areas. Sometimes the copy is a little bit harder to do because we don't know the level of conversation that's already been established. Hmm. It's being yeah. asked, it could be an email where there's been a lot of dialogue going on. So then your page should be more conversational because you had a conversation to start. Cool. Um, I don't know who asked this, but uh, how come Pep and Ollie look more like every episode? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Well, uh, well, well. We've it's been practicing. Question. We have our, you know, every morning we call, hey, what are you wearing? You know. <laughs> All right. There are actually two more questions here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna 
I want to get through these because these are really good questions. Um, if only 10% of people play explainer videos, how can I be sure that the other elements on the page work without the video, without being repetitive? Amanda asked that question. I think that's a fantastic one, um, especially if you know you, you are using the, the explainer video as a unique uh, selling proposition there. Uh, so yeah, that, go ahead what was the question? Um, if only 10% of the people play explainer videos, how can I be sure that the other elements on the page work without the video, without being repetitive? I mean, you can't know anything if you if you don't test it. Right. You're just beating the bush, you know, like guessing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, your yeah. page, any page, should have enough clarity, and it should communicate enough value without me watching your video. Video is, in most cases, supplemental to a written copy. Right. Uh, can I just point something out? Uh, I now have a blue, t blue t shirt just like Pet. So. <laughs> That's what you went and did. That's awesome. Win. Oh, fantastic. You guys are great. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else? Now, I'm going to throw this one to you all. What's the best way to use arrows and other callouts in your CTA without killing the design of the page? Christopher wants to know. Fuck the design. Using. <laughs> is that how you say fuck the design? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no. Uh, uh, directional cues can be good. They can also they can also look a little silly. Um, there was a page earlier where we didn't get to see it, but the, the design of the logo had a chevron in it, which would actually point it away off the page, um, which made me want to leave. But you know, it, it's good to call attention to your your CTA. Does it always work? I, I don't really think so. But like, I don't think the question should be how can we prevent like interrupting the look of our like page, like the design. Like, I don't know what the big right. We're so we've seen a lot of actually some pages we didn't get to look at were really nicely designed and but the copy was crap, right? And so you can do and I don't and there wasn't any real cue to say do this, click on this. And I think that you know you've always you don't want to produce an ugly page or something that looks like it's not credible. There's no trust. You're going to bounce off it. But I wouldn't worry first about whether you're going to ruin the design of your page, right? That's what testing's for, but can you do something where you point to the call to action and see if it really does, if it's worth your design not looking maybe as fab as you wanted it to, to get more leads or clicks? Yeah, yeah. Have to combine things. Don't just rely on that. Have a directional cue. Have some contrast so that it sticks out color and contrast-wise. Encapsulate it in, in something. Use these techniques together. Don't expect one little thing to, you know, design aspect to make a difference. You need to combine them sometimes. Right. Fantastic. And I think the most important piece is to not rely on any one element as a crutch for something else, mm. but to make sure that all the pieces work really well together. Ollie, you've said something in a couple of the past episodes where it's like, take a look back and scan it and see what stands out as far as the copy is concerned. There are plenty of studies that show that uh, the eye will go towards uh, text first, and if that text isn't right, then everything else is just going to be experience itself is going to be broken throughout. Um, so that's it. Thank you for the questions, everybody. We uh, we are wrapping up all of that. We're going to be winding down. Joanna, you have uh, something called Disco that you'd like to tell us uh, about. Can you tell us a little bit about Disco and uh, and go from there? Yeah, no, it's just very briefly. I mean, we're talking about landing pages and trying to figure out what people want and what's going wrong and who your audience is and things like that and who's coming to the page. So anyway, um, yeah, Copy Hackers, we've just launched in beta, at least. We're taking beta testers right now, or beta users, um, for something called Disco. It's an incentivized survey. Um, so yeah, if you go to trydisco.com, you can learn all about it. And you should, because we're doing some pretty cool stuff with it. Fantastic. And, Joanna, you also have a exclusive offer for Page Fights audience members. Tell us a little bit about that and where they can go after the chat. Actually, no, don't tell them where they can go because you have to be a registered subscriber. Oh! But tell them where the offer is. Very secret. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just we've got, you know, Copy Hackers eBooks. They're pretty well used, and I think people like them. They know what they're telling me. They're helping businesses learn to write their own copy. So um, we've got a one-week offer to get 50% off any ebook or bundle on the site. So um, yeah, you can check out your email, which will have the link to learn more about that. That's right. You can only get that link 
if you are a PageFights subscriber. And you can do that by going to pagefights.com forward slash with Joanna if you're not already there. Now, the correctional cue. Is this helping everyone? Yeah, right there. So, <laughs> you're pointing. <I'm> yeah. Sure. <laughs> so, we have a winner. You guys excited to hear who the winner is? Yes. Our winner is. <laughs> Big salad. Yay. Congratulations, guys. You will be receiving six Bye months for of Pro for free, a one-on-one -on -one consultation with Joanna, and a one-on-one -on -one consultation with myself. Congratulations. Um, we do have another Page Fights going on next month, so go ahead and check out pagefights.com and pre-register. We have a mystery guest. I can't tell you who it is primarily because we haven't figured that out yet. But <laughs> we have a mystery guest, and we're trying to, we're, and they're going to be good. I promise you that. And uh, thank you so much for watching, and congratulations to Gig Salad, and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day. Bye. Thanks, guys. See you guys.